Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well today. In this video, I'm going to be talking about linear equations. If you're ready to learn about linear equations, that means you've already learned about algebraic expressions as well as algebraic equations. Hopefully you feel comfortable with vocabulary words such as coefficients, constants, and like terms. You also should be comfortable with the order of operations, substitution, and properties of equality. And finally, it's going to be important that you know how to plot ordered pairs on a coordinate plane. If you start to feel a bit overwhelmed during the video, I suggest going back and checking out some of my older videos where I cover those concepts. While you might not like linear equations, there's nothing stopping you from going ahead and liking this video. Liking this video will help the YouTube algorithm connect this video with other people looking for some help with linear equations. Linear equations represent relationships where we have a constant rate of change. And instead of having one variable, we're now going to start looking at equations that have two variables. When dealing with equations with two variables or two unknowns, as one of the variables changes, the other one will as well. Let's take a look at an example or a situation that's going to represent a linear equation. Amira has already made three gifts for her classmates and teachers and will continue to make four per week. The reason why we know this is going to represent a linear equation is because while Amira has already made three gifts, she's going to continue making four per week at a constant rate of change. Each week, Amira is going to consistently make four more gifts. As long as she keeps making the same amount each week, we can classify this as a linear relationship. When I say linear, I'm referring to this word here, which means when we graph this, we're going to be getting a straight line on our coordinate plane. Amira making four gifts per week is going to represent our rate of change. And because Amira has already made these three gifts, that's not going to change. Therefore, we can refer to it as our constant or our constant term. In this situation, there are two types of variables. There's the independent variable and there's the dependent variable. The independent variable, which we'll refer to as x and graph along the x-axis, and for this problem it's going to be measured in weeks. If zero weeks go by, Amira can't make any more gifts, but if more weeks go by, she can make more gifts. As for the dependent variable, we typically use the variable y to represent this, and in this scenario, the total number of gifts that Amira makes is going to be the dependent variable. It's important to note that the dependent variable is always going to depend on the independent variable. The only way that Amira is going to be able to make more gifts is if more time goes by. Later on in this video, we'll practice finding the difference between these two types of variables. And that brings us to our linear equation. Our linear equations are always going to have two variables. Alone on one side, we're always going to have the dependent variable by itself. And on the other side of our equation, we'll always have a rate of change, which in this case is going to be 4x, or 4 gifts per week, and our constant term, if we have one. Notice here that the independent variable is part of the rate. This is always going to be the case. Our dependent variable on one side is always going to depend on everything else on the other side. The two things it depends on are the rate of change and the constant term. From linear equations, we will go over how to create and fill in tables. The independent variable, or x in this case, is always going to go on top, and our dependent variable is always going to go on bottom. If the table was in a column going up and down, the independent variable, or x, will go on the left, and the dependent variable, or y, will go on the right. Our tables are going to represent our possible combinations between the independent and dependent variable, or x and y. Here we can see if zero weeks go by, Amira will still have three gifts that she's created. After one week goes by, she'll have a total of seven gifts made. And at two weeks here, she'll have 11 total gifts made. Hopefully you can see here that as time goes on or more weeks go by, that Amira's gonna have more gifts made to give to her classmates and her teachers. And finally, I'll go over how to take your linear equation and our table and then create a graph on a coordinate plane. This zero three in the table represents the ordered pair zero comma three. And that's just located right here on the graph. And this one seven in the table represents the ordered pair one comma seven. Looking on our graph, we have x equals 1 here, and y is equal to 7. Next in our table, we have 2, 11, which is the ordered pair 2, comma 11. And we can see on our graph here that here is where x is equal to 2, and where y is equal to 11. For the rest of the values in this table, we can create more ordered pairs, which can be seen here. Each of these dots on this line represent the ordered pairs created from the table. Now that you have a better understanding of what linear equations are, it's time to try some examples together. I encourage you to grab some paper, something to write with, and let's do some math together. In example one, let's start with the basics and make sure we understand the difference between independent and dependent variables for linear equations. Let's start with this one where we have the number of hours H studying and the score T on a test. If you think about it, there are two variables in this situation. One of them is the number of hours spent studying, which is represented by H, and the other one is the score in the test represented by the variable T. You really want to think about which one depends on which. Does the amount of hours you spend studying depend on your test score, or does your test score depend on the amount of hours you spend studying? 
Hopefully we can agree that the dependent variable, which is going to be the test score, is going to depend on the independent variable, which is the amount of hours spent studying. One would expect that on average, if you spent more time studying or preparing for a test, you're going to do better on it. Here we can say that the test score depends on the amount of hours put into it. Now let's try this one, where we have the number of times you brush your teeth, B, and the number of cavities you get, C. Think about which one makes more sense to you. Does the amount of times you brush your teeth depend on your cavities, or does the cavities you get depend on the number of times you brush your teeth? Hopefully you are thinking that the number of cavities you get really does depend on how much you brush your teeth. Now let's try this one. The amount of hours you work, H, and the amount of money you make, M. The question you want to ask yourself is the amount of hours depend on how much money you make, or does the amount of money you make depend on how many hours you work? The more logical combination here is that the amount of money you make is going to depend on how many hours you work. If you work more hours, you make more money. If you work less hours, you make less money. This is pretty common in the real world. Let's try this one here. The number of goals you score, G, and the number of games you played, P. Think about which one makes more sense. Does the amount of goals you score depend on how many games you play, or does the games depend on how many goals you score? Try not to overthink it, but the goals you score is going to depend on how many games that you play. The idea here is that if you play more games, you're going to have more opportunities to score more goals. If you only play one or two games or matches, you're only going to be able to score so many goals. And here's one last one. The total distance you run, D, and the speed you run, R. Let's think again which one makes more sense. Does your distance depend on your speed, or does your speed depend on the distance? In this scenario, we should say that the distance here is going to depend on your rate. If you think about a scenario where two people have the same amount of time, the person who runs at a faster rate or faster speed is going to be able to cover more distance. Here we can say the distance depends on how fast you're going or the rate. When you're trying to decide which piece of information is the independent and dependent variable, remember to ask yourself in your head or out loud, whatever floats your boat, which scenario makes more sense. In this first one, it should make sense that your test score typically depends on how much effort or studying you put into the test. In the second one, the amount of cavities you get really does depend on how much you brush your teeth or take care of your teeth. In this third one, the amount of money you make depends on how many hours you actually work. For this fourth one, the amount of goals you get to score depends on how much playing time you get. And for this last one, if you're running faster than somebody else, you're going to run further than them. The distance here depends on the rate or the speed. Here in example two, let's practice filling in a table when we're given a linear equation. Let's look at this first linear equation where we have y is equal to x plus 5. y, which is our dependent variable, depends on the right side, which includes our independent variable, x. Let's start by using this x value of 0 and substituting it into our equation to find y. Substituting in 0 for x, we get y is equal to 0 plus 5, and that's just going to equal 5. Let's write that right in here in the table. Now let's repeat the process when x is equal to 2. Substituting in 2 for x, we get y is equal to 2 plus 5, and that's going to equal 7. Now let's substitute in 4 for x. Substituting in 4 for x, we get y is equal to 4 plus 5, and that's going to equal 9. Let's write that right over here. Now let's sub in 6 for x. Substituting in, we get y is equal to 6 plus 5, and that's equal to 11. And finally, let's do it one more time where x is equal to 8. Substituting in, we get y is equal to 8 plus 5, and that's equal to 13. And that's how you fill in a table given a linear equation and some x values. Now let's look at this linear equation where we have y is equal to 2x minus 3. Once again, we're going to take each of these x values and substitute it in for x to solve for y. In other words, our y value or our dependent variable is going to depend on whatever x is. Substituting in 5 for x, we have 2 times 5 minus 3. And following the order of operations, 2 times 5 is 10, and 10 minus 3 is going to equal 7. Now let's try it again, but x is going to equal 8 this time. Substituting in, we get y is equal to 2 times 8 minus 3, and 2 times 8 is equal to 16, and 16 minus 3 is equal to 13. When x is equal to 8, y is equal to 13. At this point, I'd like you to see if you can figure out what the next three y values are when x is equal to 11, 14, and 17. Subbing in 11 for x, we're going to get 2 times 11 minus 3, 2 times 11 is 22, and 22 minus 3 is going to be 19. Subbing in 14 for x, we have 2 times 14 minus 3, 2 times 14 is 28, and 28 minus 3 is going to be 25. And finally, subbing in 17 for x, we have 2 times 17 minus 3, and 2 times 17 is equal to 34, and 34 minus 3 is equal to 31. These are some of the pairs of x and y values that represent this linear equation. Now let's take a look at this equation where we have y is equal to 3 fourths times x plus 6. Just like the last example, we're going to substitute each of these x values into the equation to solve for y. Substituting in 0, we're going to get y is equal to 3 fourths times 0 plus 6. 3 fourths times 0 is just equal to 0, and 0 plus 6 is equal to 6. 
What about when x is equal to 4? We'll get y is equal to 3 fourths times 4 plus 6. When multiplying 3 fourths times 4, the 4s are going to cross cancel and we're just left with 3. And 3 plus 6 is going to equal 9. Let's write that right over here. Now let's do this when x equals 8. Subbing in 8, we have y is equal to 3 fourths times 8 plus 6. When multiplying this 3 fourths times 8, the 4 and 8 are going to cross cancel to make 1 and 2. And 3 times 2 is equal to 6, and 6 plus 6 is equal to 12. Let's write that right over here. At this point, give the video a pause and see if you can do the last two. Given a linear equation and some x values, you can just substitute the values in for x and solve for y. This is the process you're going to use to fill in tables for linear equations. And here in example 3, we're going to practice writing a linear rule or a linear equation given a table. While in example 2, we were given a linear equation and we filled out the table, here in example 3, we're going to start with a table and see if we can write the linear rule or the linear equation. Let's look at this first table. The strategy here is to see how each x value becomes the y value that pairs with it. You need to think to yourself, how does 0 become 7? Since it's increasing, you might want to think about multiplying or adding. It's always a good strategy to try adding, and if that doesn't work, you can try multiplying. To get from 0 to 7, you just add 7. However, to be a rule, it needs to work for every pair of values in this table. Seeing as how 3 plus 7 is also equal to 10, this also checks out. Now that you can see that all the y values are 7 more than their corresponding x values, we can write the equation that y is equal to x plus 7. This is the linear equation, or the rule, that fits this table. Now let's take a look at this one. Think about how 0 becomes 3. Let's start by looking at this one. We can add 3 to 0, and we'll get 3. Trying that out here, 6 plus 3 does equal 9. 12 plus 3 equals 15. 18 plus 3 equals 21 and 24 plus 3 equals 27. Since our y values were just 3 more than each of the x values, we can write our linear equation as y is equal to x plus 3. There's our linear equation. Now let's try this one. These pair of numbers are pretty interesting because they're both 0. It looks like nothing's really happening between these numbers. Since it wasn't useful, let's look at another pair. It looks like in this case that the y value is smaller than the x value. To get from 2 to 1, maybe we subtract by 1. However, that can't be true because 4 minus 1 doesn't equal 2. To get smaller, we could also potentially use division. By dividing it by 2 or cutting it in half, we do get 1. This also works for this 4 because if we divide 4 by 2, we get 2. Dividing 6 by 2, we do get 3. And dividing 8 by 2, we do get 4. And going back to when x was equal to 0 and y was equal to 0, 0 divided by 2 does equal 0. To get each y value, we divide each x value by 2 or we multiply each x value by 1 half. Remember that multiplying by 1 half is the same thing as dividing by 2. Our linear equation here is going to be y is equal to 1 half times x. While you could also write x over 2 or x divided by 2, it's more common to write a coefficient in front of our independent variable. Now let's try this one. When x is equal to 0, y is equal to negative 1. Our first thought here is that we might be able to subtract 1 from each x value. However, since that doesn't work here, that can't be true. Since I don't really know what to do with this 1 and 1, let's take a look at this 2 and 3. What's interesting here is that y is now bigger than x. It seems here that the gap between them gets a little bit bigger, and they get even further apart here. So just adding and subtracting isn't going to do the trick, and I don't think we can multiply any specific x value to get each y value. After you've tried using the four different operations, it's time to try to use a combination of two operations. Because all of these x values aren't divisible by any specific number, I'm going to use multiplication instead of division. Looking back at this 2 and 3, let's try multiplying the 2 by 2 and then subtracting 1 to get 3. So 2 times 2 equals 4, and 4 minus 1 equals 3. Let's see if that works here. 3 times 2 is equal to 6, and 6 minus 1 is equal to 5. That's good. Trying it over here, 4 times 2 is equal to 8, and 8 minus 1 is equal to 7, and that works. 1 times 2 is equal to 2, and 2 minus 1 does equal 1. That explains that one. And over here, 0 times 2 is still equal to 0, and 0 minus 1 does equal negative 1. While this one was a little bit more tricky, we can write our linear equation as y is equal to 2 times whatever our x value is, minus 1. This would be the linear equation that represents this table. Now that we've tried a few together, I'd like you to pause the video and try this one on your own. When you think you've got it or you just want to go over it together, unpause the video and I'll show you the linear equation. The linear equation you should have gotten is y is equal to 3 times x, plus 2. It turns out if you multiply each of the x values by 3 and then add 2, you'll get each of the y values. And finally, take a look at this table and pause the video and try it on your own. The linear equation that fits this table is going to be y is equal to half of x plus 5. And that's the linear equation that represents this table. 
When you're given the linear equation, filling in the table isn't too bad. However, coming up with the linear equation given a table is a little bit more difficult. And that wraps up this first lesson on linear equations. In my next video, we'll go over taking all the independent and dependent variables, as well as the linear equations and tables, and combine them with coordinate planes to make graphs. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like and letting me know in the comment section below. As always, keep up the good work, and I'll see you in the next one.